what do we know about diabetes and hypertension? We know these are related to insulin resistance. Why is insulin resistance a big deal? What do we know about diabetes in general? Do we know that people with diabetes have impaired immune systems? Yes, we do. This has been widely discussed and is um, pretty widely accepted to be the case, um, probably having to do with insulin signaling in T cells. So uh, this is a paper called Immune Dysfunction in Patients with Diabetes Mellitus. Uh, it's from Immunology and Medical Microbiology. It's from December 1999, obviously not published in the wake of coronavirus, but still relevant to what we are talking about today. And it is in this paper, as you will see, they suggest that um, there, is, there are uh, disturbances in humoral innate immunity have been described in diabetic patients. So there, are, uh, there is both adaptive and innate immunity in um, humans. We don't have to go into those details now, but uh, deficiencies are described in the immune systems of diabetics. Uh, they say cellular, uh, concerning cellular innate immunity, most studies show decreased functions. Chemotaxis, which is the movement of cells, phagocytosis, killing of uh, diabetic polymorphonuclear cells, which are um, neutrophils, and uh, diabetic monocytes or macrophages compared to the cells of controls. So multiple cells of diabetics within the immune system are more sluggish. Basically, they have slow cells. And why might this be? I don't think we fully understand, but what we know um, from, I believe, what our animal studies is that, um, as we can see here in this next study, um, insulin receptor uh, mediated stimulation boosts T cell immunity during inflammation and infection. Um, so what they are saying here is that insulin signaling is needed for an immune response. What do we know about diabetes? What do we know about heart disease? What do we know about um, hypertension in many cases is there is insulin resistance. So I talked about insulin resistance on previous podcasts. I talk about it in my book, The Carnivore Code. Basically what is happening in a state of insulin resistance and in the book and in many of these other uh, forums, I have discussed why this may happen, but the cells are not as responsive to the actions of insulin probably coming from mitochondrial signaling, telling them to refuse the actions of insulin. But when we get systemic insulin resistance during times of inflammation or during times of, uh, again, I guess if we're talking about diabetes, it would be metabolic dysfunction, then cells are not responding to insulin as well. And the signaling from insulin at the level of the cell, specifically in this case at the level of immune cells, is significantly impaired. So as you'll see in this paper here, if you were watching the YouTube video, Insulin receptor signaling controls T cell proliferation and cytokine production. T cell intrinsic insulin resistance dampens T cell pro inflammatory function. T cell insulin receptor stimulation drives protective immunity against influenza. And insulin receptor uh, modulates T cell function through controlling cell metabolism. So, this is a problem for people when they are insulin resistant. Again, this, um, I believe, is a uh, study done in uh, mouse models, but is probably very applicable to humans um, in terms of insulin-related physiology. So I find these analyses very interesting because I'm not sure that there are many in the space talking about these comorbidities. Certainly there has been lots of talk about hypertension, this ACE2 receptor, like we talked about earlier in the podcast. A lot of hypertension is also driven by insulin resistance. But then the major question for us becomes, why are people with insulin resistance more uh, susceptible to this virus? Are there a lot of people who have insulin resistance that we're not checking for, which I think is definitely the case. As I talk about in the book, and as I have described many times on my social media, there are good studies to suggest that now 40% of the American population is obese. Our population here may be hit much harder with coronavirus than um, other populations because we are more obese in general and with obesity often comes insulin resistance. And furthermore, the idea that um, in our country there is a lot of insulin resistance and a lot of people are not aware that they are insulin resistant. As I talk about in the book with this one study, when we are looking at certain metrics of metabolic syndrome, low HDL, hypertension, uh, metabolic dyslipidemia, high triglycerides, uh, all of these issues, increased waist circumference, 
Uh, when we look at those criteria for metabolic dysfunction, 88% of the US population meet those criteria. This is the reason for the tweet that I did and the Instagram post I did when I suggested that perhaps the best way to combat coronavirus would be to stay in the 12% of the population who were metabolically healthy, right? We don't want to be insulin resistant, but 88% of the United States is insulin resistant. So when we get this virus, many people may be problem, maybe they have problems. Now with that suggest, with that tweet, with that Instagram post, I was not suggesting that we shouldn't do social distancing or hand washing. I was saying that as humans, uh, we're, we're, you know, outside of those epidemiologic measures, the population measures, the public health measures, we should be thinking about remaining in the part of the population that is insulin sensitive.